alright our friends, if you're subscribed, thank you so much for coming back, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle Winkler and I'm an indie author in training. On this channel, I post videos about my self-publishing journey and share some of the mistakes I made so hopefully you don't have to make them too. I'm going by a script today because while there's only going to be five things, well, a bonus six one on this list, I don't want to forget anything. There's a lot of new features in Scrivener 3 that I'm really excited about. So this is just going to be my top five. I'll probably be doing another top five video down the road. This is just to get you started. So if you've heard about Scrivener but don't really know much about it, you want to kind of get an idea of what new features there are before you jump in and buy it, this is what the video is going to be for. These aren't in any real order, but the first one is because I just made a compiling video. Compiling is a lot easier in Scrivener 3. The layout window you had for how to compile before, it, it was just difficult. You could never really be sure how it was going to look. It was confusing. But now they've made it a nice simple window. You do have to go through beforehand and set up your binder to basically designate what's going to be a chapter, what's going to be text, what's going to be whatever. But if you're doing a book, there's really only about three or four top three or four types that you'll want to designate so it's not really that difficult once you've set it all up you don't have to worry about it again when you click a certain type of text it'll show you what that's going to look like and you can choose different layouts for it timelines i'm so excited about timelines i have been searching and searching for a timeline software and none of the ones i've seen that people have been using for timelines really worked for me but scrivener has timelines now and they're pretty basic it's just a line, you can choose the color, and you put your index cards on whichever line. So it's really simple, but it's great for visualizing the story. I can mark certain scenes to be the main character in that scene, and then lay it all out on the timeline so I can see if I have a character that shows up once and never again, and they really should. You can also go vertical, horizontal, there's a few different things you can do to make it look really versatile quick reference and other nifty views. There's a lot of different ways to look at your project now. Before you had the editing window, you can only split it in two, which worked, it was okay. You could have your writing in one window and the, or panel and then your reference in the other panel, but it was really kind of limited. Now they have all different kinds of ways to work it. You can do a pop-out window. You can split that editing window into up to four different panels now. So you can have your main writing in one, you can show your cork board, and then you can have another one, which is reference bookmarks. And I like this feature because one way that I see it would work is if you had a different character reference sheet for each main character, you can bookmark each of those and then have the separate window with all your bookmarks. And then you can just click once and it will pop into that character's reference sheet. Word count and writing history. Before it would tell you the word count for that document that you were in, but not overall. And Or if there was, it was hard for me to find that. I could never find it. Now you can get a nifty little report that shows you not only the word count in the document, but over time what your average uh, word count is, how many you've written overall. It's really handy and you can also export that into an Excel spreadsheet. Revision mode. I'm kind of on the fence about this one because Microsoft Words revision tracking feature, I forget what they call it, is so robust. There's so many different things it can do. It's, it's, I love it. But this is at least a step in the right direction for Scrivener. Before, you would have to manually go in and change the color or change the font or something to designate that this was new text. Now, you can just go into the menu, select revision one, and then any document you type in, it's going to choose that color you want to start over again and do revision two, you can just go into the menu, select revision two, and then it'll populate anything you type from that point on with your next new color. Speaking of colors, dark mode. I have been waiting for this for a while. I have migraines and if anyone, if you have migraines, you know when you're looking at a screen, it's just murder. So being able to tone down the colors and make it all nice and dark really helps my eyes. 
Not only do they have dark mode, but they have several different templates. The only downside really is you have to actually close out the program and then restart it in order to see that change happen. But I do believe there's also ways you can really customize it, make each individual thing be a different color that you want. Okay, so there's lots of other features. They have new ways to search, paragraph styles, document links, the list goes on and on. I'm not gonna go through all those now, but those are just my top five, well, top six. If you have features that you like that you wanna see me go into in depth, let me know in the comments. If you wanna hang out, I'm on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you will get free short stories based on my Dust on the Altar characters, exclusive content, and sneak peeks to my upcoming books. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.